Hello everyone and welcome to this short overview of what's new in Vantage 2 Update 6. We added the V-Ray Clipper, which is the render time cutout object. We also added subsurface scattering with the random walk mode. We added full opacity support for a semi-transparent object and support for water surfaces using a special object and support for the Phoenix Ocean texture. We also added support for VR controllers, wireframe overlay, cameras as separate objects, and uh, UI improvements. This is the scene I'm using for this demonstration. It has fairly complex uh, setup, and I'm going to start with the clipper. As you can see, it's clipping the whole scene, so let's zoom in and position it closer to this pumpkin here. The different options, such as use all objects on material, or affect lights, geometry, and so on, work as expected, but I'm also going to try and isolate the uh, mesh only for this pumpkin or the cutting of the object only to this uh, pumpkin, so I'm going to create an exclude set and I'm going to add the pumpkin object to that, but it's in exclude mode, so I'm going to switch it over to include only and only this object is being cut. The clipper also works in mesh mode, so Let's zoom in on this, um, this area of the scene here, where I have a specially prepared pumpkin with an inside uh, curve carved out. I'm going to select a special object uh, which has the Vantage logo uh, as a positive cutout, and I'm going to use it as a mesh uh, clipper object by creating a clipper with the selection. Now just uh, moving the object closer carves out the geometry. Currently the material of the clipper is just grayscale, so let's adjust that. We can change its diffuse, self-illumination to achieve different results, but uh, I also have a prepared subsurface scatter material already, so let's assign it and see the really beautiful scattering already in place. There is a light inside of the pumpkin which goes through, and I'm going to adjust the parameters, so let's have a look without the subsurface scattering. This is purely diffuse, and uh, turning on the random walk and adjusting the depth results in different scattering depth. Changing the scattering color affects the whole coloration of the effect, and if I leave it to white, I can modify the scatter radius color, which only affects the distributed light, so to speak, the scattered light. You can achieve various type of effects, combining the two colors and the depth. The subsurface scattering material was used a lot in the scene, for example in these candles here. We can adjust its shader as well, and also in another object here. Uh, the cloud was also using the subsurface scattering. I'm going to zoom in on these smoke puffs here, which have been generated with uh, billboards or sprites, and those were using a semi-transparent opacity texture, which if it's disabled, looks like this, or if it's in clipping mode, also looks like this cutout. But in stochastic mode, it's fully transparent and creates this type of uh, smoky effect. I'm going to use the edges uh, clay override mode to demonstrate the effect even better. You can see the sprites here and uh, changing the width, the thickness of the line shows the polygons. You can see also the displacement here on top of the cloud object, which generates really nice detail on top of the subsurface scattering shader. Alright, I'm going to zoom out. Um, also the liquid here in the cauldron uses subsurface scattering and there is a light that pulsates inside. By the way, I'm using assets from Evermotion's Halloween scene, for example the candles, the pumpkins, the lantern. Now this object here has some displacement and uh, it's just a regular displacement and it has the Phoenix Ocean texture in, uh, applied on it. So if I increase the wind speed parameter, it will increase globally the pattern and the height of the waves. So I will reduce that until I get something nicer. And uh, if I screw the timeline, it also has animation, which uh, makes it really easy to set up an ocean. Now you can control various parameters like the level of detail. Let me brighten this up. Um, height of the waves or their um, steepness or choppiness. That's too much, so let's dial it back. I think uh, less detail here is actually more. So let's adjust the parameters, make it uh, 
more subtle and preview the animation. Uh, just mind that increasing the level of detail introduces uh, much more detail but also increases the subdivision. So let's uh, take a look at the edges once again. We can see how many triangles have been generated. So uh, this can actually affect memory consumption, so be careful. And uh, if you don't have such an object already prepared, you can create one directly in Vantage from this icon over here. Let me position it here. Okay. You can see it comes with... Uh, oops. Let's uh, readjust it. It comes with applied material and a displacement map. It's already animated and you have all the controls in a more organized fashion uh, directly with the controls for the material as well um, here. So if I want to create a more murky looking water, for example, I can do so and I'll blur out the reflections for a more moody look, like so. The object is actually scalable, so you can use it for pools or different type of uh, water bodies. And finally, I'd like to mention that uh, cameras in Vantage are now separate objects and you can see them and transform them in the viewport directly. So that makes it much easier to work with them. So that was all for this update. I hope you like the new features. Thanks for watching and uh, take care.